difficult at all. You take your dot product, if it equals zero, so then we're orthogonal. Okay, now here's one just for you. Do j j. j dot j. Zero plus one times one. All right. We start with the easy ones just because coming out with ones and zeros kind of leads us to angles. All right, for the following, we want, so we have two vectors, 8i plus 8j and negative 10i plus 11j. Find u dot v. Think you can handle this on your own? For those of you who have trouble actually seeing what's on the board, I'll write it up here. So here we have u is 8i, yes, plus 8j, and b is negative 10i plus 11j. We took our 8 and multiplied it times the negative 10, and we added that with 8 times the 11 and it turns out to be 8. Now I have a question for you. Do you think if I turned the, changed the order of the V and the U, I would get the same answer when I did my dot product? Yes. Well, let's try it. I don't know if I have that next, let's see. V dot U. So I multiply the negative 10 times the 8, plus the 11 times the 8, which turns out to be negative 80 plus 88. <coughs> I get 8 again. So what does that tell you about the dot product of vectors? What was that word when you could rearrange them? You guys remember? No, that wasn't the official word. It was commutative. It's one that my kids can't say. Most of the time, I can't either. <laughs> oh, look, that was the next thing I asked you to do. Do you guys want to do V dot V, or do you want to move on to something new? Move on? Okay, let's see what's next. We got three vectors this time. We're checking to see if this is now associative. Remember that one where you, or no, it's distributed. That's the word I want, distributed. We can distribute the dot product through. So, what do I have to do first when I'm calculating u dot v plus w? I have to add v and w first. Do I have the same u and v? Yes, yes I do. So I just need now to put my w up here. w is 9i plus 7j. So the first problem is asking me to do u dot product with v plus w. V plus W are in the parentheses, so I have to add them together first. So when I add together V and W, what am I going to get? How do I add V and W? I add like terms. So I'm going to put my U out here, 8I plus 8J, and I'm going to dot product that with, when I add my negative 10I to my 9J, what do I get? I mean 9I, sorry. Negative I. So negative 1I. And when I add my 11j to my 7j, I end up with 18j. So now let's do the dot product of these two. I have 8 times the negative 1 <coughs> plus 8 times the 18. That turns out to be what? 8 times 18. 8.44? Yeah. So I have 144 minus 8 which will give me 136. I hope I did that right. All right, now that I did that one, and you guys got to watch, you get to do it where you do the dot product of each one and then add those together and see what you get. Some big combination of this plus that. This turned out to be eight. You'd already done this one. This turned out to be 128, which comes out to be 136. Hey look, it distributes. Dot products distribute over addition. This makes sense and it's referred to as some sort of multiplication in some books. 
We always <coughs> call it the dot product, but um, I've seen other books that have referred to it as kind of a type of multiplication for your vectors, except you don't end up with a vector, you end up with a number. Now, if you look at this, you should be able to tell that this is just more of making you do the same thing with a little extra added in. I know it's not all that interesting, but you do a dot product, you do the dot product, then you take this dot product, multiply it by 3, take this one, multiply it by 12, subtract. You guys can do that, yes? I think you can do math. Arithmetic's easy, but we want to find the angle in degrees <coughs> measured between the vectors u equals 10i plus 3j and v equals 1i minus 7j. So, you guys want to use the version that's on the test for finding our angle? Okay. That would probably work best. So it will give you the extra step that you're going to have to remember to do. So the version on the test for the angle between two vectors is the cosine of theta. I think this is the version on the test. Equals V dot W divided by the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. Is that the version they give? Is that the version I gave? Okay, not quite. So the version that I was allowed to print on the test is this one. <coughs> a lot different. These are numbers that are easily divided by. But we'll start here. Just so we're in the right in the same place on both of them. So I have, in this case I have vectors u, which is 10i plus 3j, <coughs> and vector v, which is the i, 1i minus 7j. By the way, I don't have to write the one, it's just there for reminder purposes. So I need to find the magnitude of V. I'm going to need to find the magnitude of U. And I'm going to need to find the, the dot product of V and U. Yes? In order to find the angle between my vectors. Alright, let's start with magnitude of V. Here's V. What's the magnitude of V? Square root of 1 squared uh, plus, negative plus negative 7 squared, which is going to end up being the square root of 50. Yeah. Those were numbers I could easily handle. What's the magnitude of u? Again, it's going to be the square root of, here's u. What am I going to put under my square root? 10 squared plus 3 squared. That's going to be the square root of 109. Now I need my dot product. So I need a dot product of u and v, and it didn't matter which order I wrote it in, because remember we checked that the order was unimportant. They are commutative. So I will have 10 times 1 plus 3 times negative 7. That will give me 10 plus a negative 21, so that sounds like negative 11. Yes, we're all in agreement here. So now if I plug all this into the formula, I have that the square root of 50 times the square root of 109 times the cosine of the angle between the vectors is equal to negative 11. So far, so good. I'm trying to find the angle. So what do I do now? Divide by the numbers that we have. So I'll have cosine of the angle is equal to negative 11 divided by the square root of 50 times the square root of 109. And then, last but not least, inverse cosine. So I'll have theta is equal to the arc cosine of negative 11 over the square root of 50 times the square root of 109. Now I have a question. 